Ino Zen has got a brand new kickoff pretty much. I mean, he's a changed man from the the player who lost, you know, 20 kickoffs in a row against Daniel. Um, but KV1 is a different uh, opponent than he's uh, played pretty much in any of his matches up until now. I think KV1's extremely unique and I'm very interested to see what Zen will try to do to deal with him um, in this matchup. Yeah, again, one final apology for the late start here. Hopefully we can kick things off in just a few seconds. As soon as Zen joins, I'll just pause it if... Uh, if the clock goes to 449, I think I can pause and restart. Yeah, I can. There we go. Uh, for some reason, if you... Sometimes if you pause before that, it just doesn't do the proper kickoff countdown. So I waited until 449 and then... 459, sorry. Now we can get things going. Zen versus KV1. Uh, KV1 in LA preparing for the Winter Major with his team, team Secret. And as a result, this whole match will be played on US East server. You can see the ping there. KV1 with 72, um, connecting from US West to East. And Zen with 88, connecting from Europe to US East. So pretty similar. Like I was saying just a, a minute ago, this is a new test for Zen. Uh, KV1 is a pretty, pretty unique player. Um, he plays an incredibly high intensity um, of 1v1. And um, it can really mess with the rhythm of his opponent. He was able to beat Moxie on my stream the other day doing that. Um, so, yeah, curious to see how Zen is going to handle KV1's aggression. KV1's, uh, the pressure he's able to get on the ball. And most importantly, KV1's possession that he's able to generate off the majority of his kickoffs. Will Zen continue to impress with his new kickoff repertoire? Poker, thanks to the 81 month tier one sub. I think that's all the month still. I really appreciate that. It's actually getting to an insane number. It's been been an insane number for a long time, but thank you so much for continuing to support his channel. Squeeze 88 as well with the 23 month tier one. Welcome back. Um, he says, sorry to hear about the visa, but looking forward to watch parties. So uh, yeah, that's probably a, as good a time as any to just very quickly talk about that. Um, I am not, as I tweeted earlier today, uh, I am not going to be at the Winter Major. I previously said I would be um, because I was supposed to be going to cast the Winter Major. Um, but I'm actually not going to be there because my visa was not ready in time or I won't be ready in time for my uh, flight. Um, so what I will be doing instead is I'm going to be view partying the whole event and also maybe running a little 1v1 tournament on the side. That's still in the works, but if you want to know about that when I do have the details confirmed, uh, give me a follow on Twitter. That'll be the first place you hear about it. Um, yeah, that, that's obviously a shame that I can't go. Uh, I was really looking forward to go, but I'm, uh, you know, fully focused on making the best of the situation by having a good time watching uh, the stream with you guys uh, live on my own channel. So I'm very, I'm genuinely very excited about that. It's how I operate. You know, I, t I tend not to, I don't, I try not to worry about things or I try not to think about things outside my control. And that's a situation completely outside my control, visas and the like. So yeah, I don't really, don't really concern myself with it. I, you know, do my do, uh, due diligence. Um, myself and Psyonix did everything we could, but it's a pretty convoluted and slow process, unfortunately. And yeah, it just didn't come through. But hey, that's just how things are. So let's, let's get on with it, as they say. Uh, Chip Chart, thanks to the 10 month tier one. Welcome back to the channel. Also, Freddy Bushboy with the 16 month prime. Welcome back. And Vardy XD, thanks to the brand new prime. Really appreciate you. So far, um, Zen is looking very comfortable in the matchup versus KV1. This will be his first uh, full USC server matchup in a while. He uh, did play against Lost. He's also another Brazilian player. Um, of course, playing for Furia on uh, all USC servers. Oh my days. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Some of these shots Zen's putting on are going to be very difficult for anyone to defend, but KV1, who's not really known as a shadowing defender, not really known for his reactive defense, he's very much going to struggle. His priority um, with his defensive strategy is to get his car moving towards the ball as early as possible. He likes to challenge early. He likes to um, yeah, challenge facing the play, much like Zen is here. Um, so yeah, whenever KV1 is forced onto the back foot, he does not, I think, um, perform as well as uh, some of his counterparts in the world of ones, such as Ruas, um, players like Daniel, first killer, very good at playing with their back to the ball. Zen just looks like he's completely dominant in offense. Unless KV1 can start to dictate the flow of the game and control uh, the ball for longer periods, this is not going to go well for him. 
it's great to see KV1. Again, I said this during the Moxie match, but it's great to see him on an even ping uh, or, or low ping matchup. Great to see him with green ping on the scoreboard. It's something of a rarity for him um, being in South America. And he is such a talented player. Do not let this first half of game one fool you. KV1 is a monster. He has got a very impressive one beyond resume over the years. The Zen, he is just uh, possessed right now after his loss to Rawas. He's building yet another win streak. Um, and I'm sure he'll take Rawas on again very soon. Oh, great save by Zen. Not a moment too late. This is the mid boost, but so did KV1. That leaves it for Zen to go back and grab. Here comes KV1. Looking for a reset of his own. Zen reading perfectly that he didn't actually have one and then dodges the demo on the exit. KV1 is not able to connect with many of his plays here. Usually so clinical um, with his shots. If, if he's not scoring his shots, you know, he, he's always getting something. KV1 is used to getting a boost seal, getting his opponent to waste some of their boosts, getting his opponent to land badly um, and maybe be vulnerable for a demo. That's what he's looking to do with his offensive strategy in general, but today it's just not working. Every time he shoots, it seems like KV, uh, it seems like Zen is coming away with the ball pretty easily. 9-2 is a crushing scoreline for game one. Yeah, Zen still looks very good recently. Give you one break check there to try and dodge a demo. Zen plays the ball. He's one step ahead again. Could have maybe caught KV1 on the landing there. Instead, just fakes a touch back into his own half. Turns on the spot. And Zen's just really keeping KV1 guessing a lot here. Ball cam dribble from KV1. Decent flick. He's forced uh, Zen into his own net there, but Zen able to close the distance before KV1 can turn. Allow him to, again, get a turnover to possession fairly easily. Yeah, like I said at the start of this uh, game, and like I um, tweeted earlier on today when I was announcing that I'm not going to be at the Winter Major, um, I am working on getting a little 1v1 event going um, alongside the Winter Major. Hopefully we can make that happen. With uh, four of the... I'll, I'll, so what I'll say right now is I'm looking to get four of the best in the world um, up against each other. Just a little invitational give you guys maybe some 1v1 content before the RLCS content starts um, every day next weekend. That's the plan. But yeah, more information to come soon on my Twitter. Life listener, thanks to the uh, Prime Gaming. Sorry, thanks for converting your sub from Prime Gaming to Tier 1. That is a very confusing way um, <laughs> to explain that. I don't know why. Streamlabs has uh, such a long explanation there. But thank you for that. Dan Van Hurt, thanks to the 7 month Prime as well. He says, Johnny, I hope it's an April Fool's joke that you're not commentating at the Winter Major LAN. Now, I think I probably have to address that as well. Last year, um, Sumpy and I were under the impression that we were not going to be going to the um, Winter Major. We made a, an, a announcements on our streams that we weren't going to be going there to last year's Winter Major. Um, and then when we found out that our visas were in fact going to be available, for us to go late, um, you might remember we arrived for the second day, we decided to leave it as a bit of a surprise and continue to tell people that we weren't going to make it right up until we appeared on your screens. But unfortunately, I can promise you that this time that is not happening. Um, I'm not going to be there. I know that tomorrow is uh, April, April 1st and you guys are hoping it's an April Fool's joke. If you're watching this on VOD, it might currently be April 1st for you, but um, no, I'm not joking. I'm not going to be there. Uh, <laughs> I, I wish I was joking. I wish I could tell you it's a... Uh, uh, it's another prank, uh, but it is not. Yeah, we're just not going to be there this time. This just sounds like another prank. It's not. I promise you, it's not. No, no, it, it's not. I'm going to be. I'm going to be view partying. You'll see me. Last uh, year, you'll remember that. Uh, wait, did Zen say it was a bad server? He must have. Um, last year, you'll remember I said I was going to be doing view parties, and uh, then um, on the first day of the event, I tweeted out something like, "Not going to be able to do, do a view party today. Those will start tomorrow." Um, and yeah, I tweeted that because we were actually on a, on a flight um, to LA. But you'll see me on day one doing a view party of the event. So yeah, yeah you, can, <laughs> you can have a confirmation at that moment, I suppose, um, if you don't believe me. Okay, game two. Sorry, I've accidentally forgotten to put the, uh, the one on the scoreboard there for Zen. He's taking game one in extremely dominant fashion. Shows no respect to KV1's flick from distance. Just charges in. You know, Zen's got such a keen eye for when he can make those moves. He's so quick when he does spot an opening to challenge. 
closes the distance. Often hidden, but even if he's not, still makes it work. The key to rush challenges, um, you know, most most of the time when people, especially lower rated players, um, get rush challenges wrong, but even pro players make this mistake as well, is they, uh, they try to go a bit too high on the rush challenge and um, block a flick or block a pop a bit too much. Really, when you're rushing a challenge, the thing you should be most scared of is actually a 50-50. You should be scared of a low 50-50 more than anything. And the reason for that is because if the opponent 50-50s um, the ball low as you're coming in to rush a challenge and you pre-jump a bit too high, your car is going to bounce off the top of the ball. You're going to go flying past the play and your net's going to be open. Whereas if they actually try and flick the ball over you and you're rushing a challenge, a lot of the time what will happen is you'll get a demo or a bump on them and counter it even though they got the ball past you. So it's better to stay low on your rush challenges, even if you do get uh, uh, outplayed by the ball, if the ball goes past you, very often you're gonna get uh, a, a demo or a bump anyway. So try, yeah, definitely go low on your rush challenges and you'll benefit from it. Big C99, thanks to the six, C, or six month prime, sorry. Welcome back to the channel. Then throwing in those delayed kickoffs after suffering a few um, kickoff goals from KV1. Maybe one able to spot that rush challenge, and this is a sneaky one from Zen. But since he's done it so many times, KV1 is able to see it coming. Look at that! He doesn't actually have Zen in his vision when he's flicking the ball there, but he knows based on the um, the previous challenge Zen has made that there's a decent chance he's rushing there. Even if he's not, he's going to have to jump on his goal line to save that flick. So. Kind of a win-win there for KV1. Now the air bump coming in. He hits the bar with it. Well, KV1 did connect with Zen. But he missed the shot. It luckily gets a demo on the exit. KV1 just catching up to Zen there. Bit of a mistake previously with his air dribble bump setup. KV1 again looking to bait a challenge from Zen. No big win in this position. Zen keeping the ball in his back corner. Very safe play here. Could have rushed across the face of the box. But no, he just wants to keep it in the back corner, so that really eliminates any offensive plans that KV1 might have. Brilliant aerial defense there from KV1. Having to cover multiple options there. He was up early just in case Zen was planning a reset. Blocked the double tap even though he had to fly back for it. Zen with the dribble of his own. KV1 fakes a challenge, Zen doesn't fall for it, and then <laughs> rips a flick top shelf to pull the game back within one. Who do I think has better kickoffs, Toxic or KV1? I think you know, when it comes to standard kickoffs, KV1 is one of the best in the business. Um, yeah, he's just very good at them. Standard, I think standard kickoff kings would probably be KV1, Daniel, Yan, uh, for me. Um, but you know, there's more to kickoffs than just fl uh, you know flipping into the ball after a speed flip. You you've got wave dash recovery kickoffs, fakes, delays. Um, all sorts of viable strategies these days, just leaving the ball with a half flip, of course. So yeah, Toxic's probably got the best repertoire, I would say. He's got the... He's got the most impressive, um, you know, diverse kickoff strategy, in my opinion. It really just depends what you're what you're asking. Oh, it's a really confident rebound by Zen. KV1 even knew that he was going to be up for this. As soon as Zen boomed the ball to the backboard there, KV1 knows, oh, I've got to get up and beat him to this, but he couldn't do it. Zen's too quick, and uh, now he's got the lead by one goal. Zen, misreading a sidewall bounce there. Open net for KV1, has he missed this? Oh my goodness, he's missed it and it's bounced horribly. Well, that is a terrible misplay by KV1. That was completely open. And now Zen's punishing him with a pre-flip and a crunching pinch of the near post to squeeze the ball in. Pre-flip into an air dribble and then a little bit of a post pinch to finish. Or KV1 with a two goal miss there. Should have been five all. Not only did he miss the open net, he missed it in the worst possible way. That bounce was irrecoverable. Here comes Zen again, pre-flipping to keep his momentum here. It's such efficient movement in the air. Zen slots another banger. This movement in the setup is just outrageous. The fact he can get into this position with <laughs> so much boost left over is absolutely insane. And it's all because of the pre-flip to get the ball in his car moving without wasting any boost and using another reset to get his car moving again without using any boost. 
This is probably the most underrated aspect of chain flip resets. Just how much distance you can travel, how much distance you can cover um, compared to a standard air dribble. Pogo attempt there from Zen. Uh, they're faking a challenge on the spot with a little pirouette thrown in. That might look like Zen's just kind of freestyling there, spinning for no reason, but what, what he's doing is he's trying to get KV1 to think that he's, uh, ch he's challenging. Oh, has KV1 missed another open net? He's done it again. This time it does bounce back flat, but he didn't read it. Oh, KV1 might be getting in his own head a little bit about these open nets, because Zen left that one completely available to him, and he missed it off the other post. Zen, ceiling double, ceiling triple, into the boost seal. KV1 just reeling from the pressure here. You can't read what Zen is up to in the air. You can't really blame him. Wicked snapshot from Zen. Into the bottom corner, 8-4. This has just completely gotten out of control. Partially, or partly due to Zen's mechanical ability and offense, but also you have to say partly due to KV1's inaccuracy from distance on completely open nets. Got whack. Thanks to the Prime. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel, I should say. Great snipe. I mean, Zen's just showing KV1 how it's done here. You know, if you give give uh, give him an open net, he's placing it. He's putting that in the bottom corner furthest from KV1's recovery. Merciless gameplay from, in my opinion, the world number two. Since everyone always asks, what's what's your top five looking like right now? I would probably say it's. Um, I think a very clear top three at the moment of Rewas, Zen, Daniel. That's a, I don't think, um, a top three that really anyone's debating right now. Um, but beyond that, you know, the, the other players in the conversation are, in my opinion, Jan, uh, Moxie, and then TRK is a bit difficult to rank because of his inactivity. But yeah, if, if, if we ignore TRK due to inactivity, I'll go with, uh, uh, yeah, probably... Jan Moxie uh, to round out the top five. You think there's a big gap between Zen and Roas and everyone else? I wouldn't say so. I think, you know, even though um, yeah, Zen's looked unbelievably impressive recently, I, th I still think that the top five are all very close. It's just that small differences in 1v1, small differences in skill, can often result in 4-0s, 3-0s, 4-1s. Zen is just styling on him right now. It's completely brutal. These have not been close games. KV1 needs a complete mental reset here if he's going to have any chance in this matchup. Zen has been able to match him in all of the areas KV1 is strong in and completely destroy him in uh, areas Zen is strong in. I'm talking aerial, aerial gameplay in offense. Mechanical efficiency. I mean, Zen is just on a different level, it would seem when it comes to those aspects of the game. And then, you know, the, the positioning, the um, the possession, the pressure, all the areas that you expect to see KV1 thriving in, as he always does, he's got nothing for Zen um, in this matchup today. Did somebody say BRB or... Oh, no, uh, Zen must have gone for a new car. He's left the lobby, I see. There he is. Um, 2v2 show match after this sweep. Well, I know, actually, after this, we're not going to be uh, continuing my stream because... We should have a very interesting grand final in the Saudi E-League to watch. Uh, now, view parties are not allowed for that event, so I'm not going to be view partying that one. But what I'll probably do is I'll probably raid them, um, because I fully intend to watch it myself, and I'm sure you guys would love to watch it as well. Um, I think that the lower final is currently happening. I'll, I'll go and quickly check how that is going, because it could be a Falcons Rule 1 final on LAN if uh, that lower final goes as expected. Falcons are playing against, I think, uh, Onyx in the final in the lower final of that one. Let me just very quickly check for you guys while we get started with game three here. If you want now circling Zen, this is more like what we're used to seeing from him, and he does get a goal out of it. This is where KV1 shines when he's just chipping away at his opponent's boost total, keeping full pressure on them. Peppering the net with shots. Yeah, looks like Falcons vs. Onyx in, in the Saudi E-League is in game two. Falcons took the first game. Um, yeah, Falcons can win that. It's going to be Falcons versus Rule 1 in the grand final. 
$100,000 uh, tournament, a LAN tournament in Saudi. Um, yeah, no view parties allowed, but I'll, I'll give them a raid and you guys can tune in if you so wish. That's what I'll be watching after this, uh, but off stream. More show matches coming in the few uh, in the next few days, though. Great mind game by Zen. Covers the potential of KV1's challenge with a blocking angle as well. Very well played. Threatening the reset to bait the pre-jump too high. Yeah, the, like I said before, the good thing about uh, me not going to the Winter Major to cast this time around is I can stream more show matches. I can stream hopefully a 1v1 tournament on the side as well as view parties of the event. So, as always, I mean, I always say this every stream these days, but I, uh, I'm going to keep saying it because it's the best way to keep up with what I've got planned. Follow me on Twitter if you want to see um, and hear about events before they happen. I tweeted this one out on Tuesday, I believe. So, uh, yeah, people have had a, had a chance to put it into their plans if they want to watch it live. View parties are allowed. Many Mina streamers do it. I don't think it is allowed. I asked uh, someone who I uh, who I know is working pretty closely to the event, and they said that view parties are not allowed. If people are doing it, maybe they're just hoping that nobody says anything. Everybody's saying view parties are allowed. I'm pretty sure they're not, but <laughs> I don't know. Not sure how. Not sure who to. I, I can't, I can't, it's not that I don't trust you guys, I'm sure you want me to, I'm sure you all, all got your best interest in mind, I'm sure you're telling the truth that people do view part you, but I've been told that you're not allowed to, so, I don't think I'm going to. I rain. thanks for gifting a hundred pounds as a prize pool for these guys. Um, I'll be sure to pass that along to the winner of this match, which it looks like it's going to be Zen in for, if I was to guess. I mean, you know, oftentimes, especially in esports, you'll hear um, casters, analysts telling you either team could win, either player could win. You know, it really is absolutely on a knife edge. You'll need to watch to find out. Um, but truth be told, it does not look like Zen is interested in losing a game today, never mind the series. And it looks like his interests will be... Um, appease. What a shot from Zen. This is ridiculous to get this much power with a slow takeoff like this. I mean, look how he's air rolling backwards into the ball there to get as hard of a hit on it as he can. Perfect technique. Up 6 2. Corax191, thanks to the 44 month prime. Welcome back to the channel. Sir TZ, thanks to the 20 month prime as well. Much appreciated. Restraint shown there from Zen. Had the flip reset available, but he knew if he flipped into the ball, it's likely not a goal, so just recovers instead to attack another day. KV1's just showing him so much respect right now, and it's not working. Another goal for Zen. He chain dashes down the line. He's got no boost to play with here, but it doesn't matter. He just gets a flick set up, double jump shots on target, and it's unstoppable when it reaches the goal line. Yeah, KV1's Aggression has been completely tamed in this match. It, it looks like he's just lost his confidence. If he can't get it back, there's not going to be on any chance of him coming back to win this. So that's, you know, I, I, I say I'm not expecting it to happen, but if it is going to happen, he needs to play with full disrespect for Zen. He's not going to um, be able to make his style work if he's scared to challenge, if he's scared to um, press when he has a boost advantage. Zen is playing completely fearlessly and... Uh, his mechanics are doing the talking. Yeah, KV1, he does have final boss in his name. I think he's uh, part of a long list of South American players who, you know, they put something in their name to motivate themselves. Um, you know, Kyo TG1, the godfather of the region. That TG1 stands for the great one. Um, I think Lost calls himself Lost Goat sometimes. You know, they, 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 they like to put something in their name to, you know, motivate themselves. And I, I respect that. You know, it's, it, it's something I, I would never be able to do because I don't believe it. But if they could put that in their name and believe it, that's definitely going to help them. Um, give them confidence and you got to remember he's, he's prepping for a big threes event that's for you know mainly for 3v3 that he does this but 
If you truthfully asked him, do you think you're the final boss of 1v1? I don't think he would say yes. Another technically open net miss there from KV1. He had a fantastic mind game moments ago, but unfortunately his moments in this series have been few and far between. Zen has had the upper hand for uh, pretty much the entire rest of the match. This has not been close in the slightest, which is ridiculous to think about. I don't think KV1's ever been destroyed on even ping in a manner even close to this. But stylistically, he's just had nothing um, for Zen. He's not been able to make Zen feel awkward in this match at all. It's a well-worked goal there, but again, it's just so late in the game. And I mean, usually when I show you guys the scoreboard late on in any game with KV1 in it, KV1 has more shots. Even in games he's losing, he often has more shots um, because that's his strength. He's able to generate so many shots because he controls the game, controls possession, controls where the whose side of the pitch the game is being played on. So he's trading shots with his opponent's saves. Um, but it's just not been the case today. Zen's has been too quick. He's been too decisive. Yeah, KV1. I think that's car language tells you all you need to know. He looks completely confused as to how to tackle the challenge that's in front of him right now. You know, I said at the start of this that uh, this will be a, um, a style that Zen... Has never played before. I think I do. I do stand by that. I think KV1's got a very unique style for modern ones. He's uh, you know got quite a traditional style, but with the modern twist to it. All of the ground play, all the pressure, and all the um, the volume of shots that greats in the past, like Fairy Peak, Khaled, even going further back, Marky Duda have uh, have had and have uh, utilized the, their advantage in the previous stages of Rocket League 1's meta. You know, he's able to do that with, a, with modern mechanics usually. But unfortunately for him, he's facing a challenge he's never um, seen anything like as well. This is a, a totally unique player. Nobody really plays ones like Zen. The confidence in his movement, the confidence in his mechanics is, I think, second to none right now in the game. And KV1 does not have an answer. Zen denied. Celebratory final goal. Uh, this game's been over for about two minutes, at least. 3-0. KV1 facing down the barrel. Can he get a game? That's really the, the question he should be trying to answer right now, is figure out how to win one game. I mean, it's, a, it's baby steps in any situation like this when you're down as badly as you are. <laughs> he's changed his name to just KV1. <laughs> I don't know if he's listening to the stream or if one of his teammates are listening to the stream and they told him, KV1, buddy. You've got final boss in your name. What are you doing? And then he's like, oh yeah, my bad. I'm not the final boss. <laughs> I love that. I, I, I'm not sure what uh, motivated him to change that, if he just thought of it himself or if somebody uh, told him, hey, you your name's not updated. Because sometimes, you know, to give him some copium here, you change your name on Steam and uh, it doesn't update until you leave a lobby and come back in. So it might have um, just failed to change even though he did this earlier. Uh, more likely, he just changed it right now. Uh, he just changed it out of respect. Mentioned the prize pool. Ah, oh, my bad. I forgot. I was a bit, a bit distracted about the KV1 name change. My mistake. A bit distracted about, uh, you know, trying to explain what's currently happening here. But I don't think it will matter. These guys uh, look like they're sweating it out regardless. I, I used to say prize pool um, early in any show match, or as early as possible in any show match when there was one. Um, because certain players who were used to being part of prize pool uh, matches on my channel would play a little bit more carefully if there was money on the line. These days though I think, you know, with or without a prize pool the players are doing the exact same thing. Uh, even if there's a prize pool, Zen is still playing exactly as he does now. It's not like he's going to dial it back and play more carefully. No, he's going to keep playing like this. Uh, so I don't, think, I don't think we need to worry too much about that. Okay, 1-1. One, one. KV1. Needs to be as careful as possible here. He doesn't shoot first time. Oh, well played. I love this from KV1 because, you know, his, his open net accuracy has not been brilliant today. So I think shooting first time would have probably failed <laughs> given his track record. But that first touch is absolutely disgusting. Baits the challenge. Pops the ball over Zed. Has a one goal lead. Let's see if he can do anything with this. Carrie Poppins, thanks for the 17 month pride. Welcome back to the channel. Yeah, clearly Zen's kickoff is just all around 
a whole lot better than it was in his earlier show matches. Mind game equaliser for Zen off the kickoff position plate. You know, it's not just the variety, the new variety of kickoff Zen's got. He's got just a much better standard kickoff as well. He's switching his approach angle, he's switching his uh, flip direction. The two most fundamental um, things you have to do if you're playing ones at the highest level. Look at the difference it makes. Kickoff possession, now kickoff goal. Zen is, I think, just becoming even more of an all around player every time we see him play. KD1 now in midfield with some space. Once sent to challenge early there, Zen is not obliged. And unfortunately, that results in a pretty early possession loss for KD1. Zen fakes him and scores on him to go up by two. KV1 looking to tightly turn there, a bit of understeer, maybe a bit concerned to turn too far as he sets up the challenge there. Two minutes in, he cannot allow this scoreline to increase much further. Wave dash recovery kickoff for KV1, he's squeezing one through. And now what's Zen going to have an answer for this one? A lot of people are still saying he can view party this side of the E-League final. I mean, I'll, I'll message someone after this um, to, to see if there's an update on that, but I've been told that I can. Uh, I'll, I'll ask after this. After this series is over. See what the, the news, the latest is on that situation. Uh, the side of E-League final should be... It's, I think it's supposed to start in 15 minutes, but I imagine they're running a bit late if they only got game two. Um, finished a couple of minutes ago. So it'll probably be in around about 30, 40 minutes from now, I would imagine, depending on the lower final uh, scoreline. It's a better mid game from KV1. He's reached half time only down by one, make it down by two. Definitely a more cautious defensive strategy. Uh, you know, it's what he's decided to go for, but you know, even there when he turns, he's immediately countered. Just doesn't have a read on Zen's timing. Zen's faking him occasionally, flicking it past him occasionally. You know, it's not just the aerial game for Zen that's resulted in such big wins today. He's, he's really been dominant in every aspect of the game. Here comes a pinch shot. It's <laughs> off target, but look how deep KV1 is respecting Zen's pinch to the max there. Flip reset for KV1. Oh, what a finish! Well, that could lift his spirits. That could give him some confidence. Two minutes to go, KV1 slams a flip reset into the top shelf at pace. A be careful situation maybe, I'm not sure if we're in that kind of territory yet. Oh, Zen's actually just circled in the spot here, KV1 did not see that coming. Still gets an advantageous position, thanks to that little bump that he got in the follow through of his flick. KV1 denying every boost pad down the line, even the small ones, Zen really Extremely starved in this position. KV1 looking to 53 and he does. We have a tight game. KV1 does get his best game yet. It's a really good decision there from KV1 in the final second. He knew the shot across the box was not going to go through. He just went for the near post instead. Look at KV1. Zen denies a near post double. Near post rebound, I should say. But KV1 looks like he's woken up now. Far more threatening in his last few offensive pushes. Now, looks to go underneath Zen's pre-jump. Zen equal to it, but his boost is starting to run a bit low here. Hangs about in the air. KV1 gets it past him, but hits the post. Zen trying to get the boost on spawn. Not there for him, but mid is. This is so much better from KV1. Finally, going even with Zen in the midfield. Creating end-to-end -end chances for both players. Pre-flip pop from Zen. Oh my goodness, he's pulled something out of nothing here. There's almost no play in the ball whatsoever. No momentum for either player whatsoever. And Zen pops it with a pre-flip. Point blank range. With a minute and three left, he's back in the lead. Straight spawn kickoff. KV1 pushes it left. Looks like he will be able to get Zen's boost away from him here. Wants the floor pinch. Oh, it's a mind game. Zen's out of the game. That's going to be a tie. Well, KV1 looked like he was going to set up a floor pinch here. Instead, he just fakes it right next to the ball. I mean, that is precise. What a mind game by KV1. Zen and low boost. 
He had absolutely no chance of making it back. Ceiling challenge for KV1. Connects well. Zen's boost management is good though. What a fight we're getting in game four. Took KV1 a while to figure Zen out, but now he's got an answer. Of course, the problem is Zen's got levels. Oh, what a save. KV1. Scoops the ball off his goal line. Zen still all over him. Steals away the back corner boost. KV1. Wave dashes into position. Reset from Zen. He's too far away for KV1 to really do anything about. That is a bit of a kill on the bounce in the pogo attempt. Zen going nowhere there. He's keeping the ball safe though and has a chance to go all in. The long range flip reset. KV1 shuts it down. Overtime. Game four. KV1 producing his best game in the middle of the series, down 3 0. Does he have it in him to cross the line? Both players saying no thank you to the corner boost. Both going to be low in this exchange. And KV1 flicks it past him. We do have a game for the Brazilian. Well, what guts and what composure he must re require to get a game when you're not just down 3 nil in a best of seven but you're down really really badly I mean those three games were massive scoreline differences KV1 uh, looked like he was totally outclassed and still even though he's down 3 nil, he manages to come back and get one win on the board if he puts final boss back that would be legendary banter now he's, he's just he's still KV1 <laughs> that would be incredible if he, had, if he put Final Boss back in his name. <laughs> now, Zen is in, uh, Zen's in Europe right now. He says, wait. KV1 says, wait. Hold on a second here. What's happening? His RL crashed. <laughs> it says KV1 Final Boss left the match. See how it still, his, his name up there is still KV1 Final Boss, even though he changed his name to KV1. You know, this is where I think Zen will really start to, uh, to focus up here. Wait, it says KV1 joined the match. What's going on? Yeah, you can you can go. Yeah, it's fine. If if yeah, this is where I think Zen is really going to start to focus up because he, you know, probably wants this to be a dominant win after you know, seeing how well games one, two, and three went for him. Um, you know, Zen's an artist. He he wants to not just win against his opponents. He wants to win in style, in dominant fashion. And um, you know, if he gives KV one another game, suddenly. This starts to look a lot more close than it did earlier on. Now he's still KV1, guys. No KV1 final boss. Zen just able to get a save on this. Looks like KV1's bump onto Zen um, helped Zen in that position. Zen shoots early to deny the back corner boost, but KV1's perfectly happy with that. He's running away and scores a second goal. Oh, I forgot to tell him about the price, but I keep, I keep forgetting. I'm so not used to it these days. I'm, <laughs> I'm really out of shape here. I keep forgetting. I don't want to distract them as well. I try to be as uh, invisible as possible when I'm in these games. Maybe one. Looking to double a third. Oh, he's missed it, and that's going to be a two-goal miss. But that kind of confidence is what KV1 needs. I love that he's going for that, because like I said at the uh, start of game four, he needs to play with full confidence. He needs to play almost disrespectfully and uh, try and ignore the fact that it's actually Zen that he's up against. Try and think, no, I'm better than my opponent. I'm just going to rush challenges. Um, because I'm getting there faster. And that is exactly what I mean. Look how disrespectful this turret is. Zen is right on top of the ball. KV1 says, I don't care. I'm just going to drive into it. Um, <laughs> just just plays the ball. Ignores Zen. If he, can keep the, if he can keep doing that, then I think he's got a chance to actually win this. It's a great save by Zen. Couple of wave dashes gets him back to the ball. Now I remember I was actually, I said the same thing I believe, if you missed my um, cast of Daniel versus Evo, great shot by KV1 again, he is absolutely rolling now. Um, but like I was going to say, if you missed my cast of Daniel versus Evo, I said the exact same thing, I believe it was at the start of game 6, or at the end of game 5, I, d I don't remember exactly, it was it the was end of game 5, start of game 6, something like that. Um, Daniel looked like he'd completely taken over the series against Evo. And I said the same thing. I said, Evo's got to play with full confidence if he's going to have any chance of winning this. And you're in, when you're up against a player like Daniel or Zen, and they're playing this well, 
you cannot hesitate, or else you're just gonna uh, you're gonna get destroyed. Um, and Evo told me after that he was actually listening to the stream and he heard me say that and he thought, yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. I'm just gonna send it. Let's go go YOLO this game and he won game six. So I'm not saying it was me that won that game, but I'm saying Evo agrees. It, you know, when you're up against uh, one of the absolute best in the world and they're on form, you can't you know wait for mistakes. You can't play off errors. They're not gonna make any. You just have to go. Johnny bike, uh, Johnny coach bike. I've I've definitely accidentally coached many times um, during one v one show matches, mostly with kickoffs because, like you guys know, um, I like my kickoffs and a lot of pros don't really like their kickoffs, so they don't think about it too much. Um, and sometimes it's easier as a viewer or as a, as a caster to spot the the correct kickoff strategy in a in a game. Um, much harder when you're in the moment. Now, I explained this to, um, I can't remember who I think it was. Oh, who was I talking to the other day? A great finish by Zen here. A little wave dash dribble. I can't, I can't remember. Yeah, it was, well, yeah, the tier was in my stream earlier uh, this month, I think, when we were talking about it. But there was actually a conversation I had off stream. I've forgotten who it was with, but it was with, it was, it was with a top tier ones player. And uh, they asked me why do I think it's harder for pros in the game to figure out what to do with their kickoff compared to me watching the game or you guys watching the game. Um, and the reason I think is quite simple. Let me ask you guys, if you're playing 1v1 um, and the score is 9-2 or, you know, maybe there's, let's just say there's lots of goals have happened already in your 1v1. If I ask you, what kickoff did you do for the fifth kickoff of the game? You're going to say, I haven't got a clue. In fact, if I ask you, what was your third goal of the game? you're probably going to say, I haven't got a clue. Because when you're playing the game, when you're playing 1v1 especially, it is extremely difficult to remember anything that happened earlier in the game. Oh my goodness, what a shot. Because you're, you're so focused on what you're doing right now. Whereas when you're casting, when you're watching, you know, it's you're, you're, you're building a story in your head. You're, you're paying attention to what's going on. So it's a lot easier to remember what's happened earlier. And that's, I think, why watching, casting, you can sometimes spot tendencies that are uh, counterable uh, more than a player who's actively in the game. That's why I think 1v1 is the most coachable game mode in Rocket League. If every uh, 1v1 player had a kickoff coach who's just writing down the outcome and the setup of every kickoff in a game and, uh, you know, kind of relaying that information to the player while they play, the player would definitely, in my opinion, play um, better and have a higher chance of winning. It's kind of similar to, I don't know if you guys are uh, familiar with rally uh, drivers, um, but yeah, rally drivers are uh, drivers who have a co... Um, I don't know what it's called. It's called like a co-driver or something. Is that the name? Someone in chat might know. They have somebody sitting in the passenger seat while they're racing around a track, telling them what the upcoming corners are going to be. Co-pilot. They've got a co-pilot. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. So that co-pilot couldn't just jump into the driver's seat and drive the car better than the driver. But what they can do is they can read the instructions to the driver about what corners are coming up and tell the driver what to expect. That's similar to what a coach does in Rocket League most of the time. They can't pick up the controller and play better, but they can tell the player what to expect. Yeah, navigator is another word for it. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. I know a lot of people don't understand that you can coach someone who's better than you at a game or a sport or something similar or driving. You know, you can, in fact, be a coach and be worse at the thing you're coaching. Oh, Zen just, yeah, he's, he's, he's really, I think, just solidified in this game. Like I said, I think Zen is just going to really focus up here, try and give away no free goals. As he's realized KV1's leveled up his game. He's no longer just able to dominate by um, sending it every single play. So now KV1 playing with confidence and actually countering some of his uh, plays. It's enough to win game four in overtime. Zen just closing out the deal here. One minute to go in game five. That's all he needs to do is just keep KV1 at bay. Oh, great delayed shot by KV1. You can see there from Zen's POV, it's so difficult to read what KV1's up to here. Is he going to just continue air dribbling this or is he going to shoot it? But KV1 just pulls out the angle shot. He even gets a bump on Zen as well. Not, I don't think it mattered. The shot was good. KV1 closing the gap just a little bit. He might be able to close it a little bit more. Oh, he goes high with a kickoff goal. Well, that was the chance. KV1's open net accuracy lets him down again. It wasn't completely open. It was a very difficult shot, but 
He did so well. He did the hard part, won the kickoff, saved a bunch of boosts while doing it. And he just couldn't slot the finish. Free goal gap opens up again. Falcons won in the E-League. Okay, so that'll be grand final. Falcons rule one coming up after this. Air dribble from KV1 is good. He's got some time here to slot the open net. Oh, it's just not fast enough though. It's been a nightmare for KV1 today. The open nets have gone completely wrong for him. I mean, that, that one he just hit a bit too slowly. Again, a difficult shot to get power on from that angle, but if you miss it, you've just missed your chance of coming back. Another deep position for KV1 denies Zen the pinch. He doesn't want to concede a pinch against Zen today. Still an outside chance of coming back, but I think, you know, Zen will have it in him to get control of the ball in at least one of the next two plays. Probably this one, since we're spawning straight. If not control, definitely delaying a goal. There it is, confirmed. Zen wins four games to one. GG's. He wins £100, which is probably about $120, $125 these days. I'll have to give it a quick Google to find out. Let's just do that right now. $123 uh, to to Zen there for the win. Yeah, GG's. Appreciate KV1 taking time out of his practice for the Winter Major to um, play against Zen here. And uh, yeah, shout out Zen. His second win streak continues. Hopefully we'll see um, him again soon.